Let's recap how to animate in vPython. First, we create the marker that we want to animate. When we create the marker, we give it a name and specify the x and y coordinates where it starts in the animation. In this episode, we'll give this marker the name Safi. Then we give Safi an initial velocity in the x and y directions, and then we give Safi an acceleration in the x and y directions. We usually want to also create a graph of Safi's motion, so we use vPython's gcurve function to set up graphs of position and velocity. Then we perform the animation with a while loop. This indented section of code will repeat itself until the condition inside the parentheses is no longer true. First, we calculate how much Safi's velocity components will change based on the acceleration. Then we apply this acceleration to Safi, changing his velocity components. Then we calculate how much Safi's position will change based on his new velocity. Finally, we move Safi by the appropriate distances in the x and y directions. At this point, we also update our graphs. The loop finishes by increasing the time and checking for whether it needs to continue repeating. In this video, we'll use this code to examine the specific case of freefall. Freefall is one of the most important applications of constant acceleration motion. Freefall happens when an object falls toward the surface of the Earth under the influence of gravity. Over short distances, the impact of air resistance is very small, and this freefall model works fairly well. In freefall, the acceleration is governed by the strength of the Earth's gravitational field, which has a magnitude of 9.8 meters per second squared. This gravitational field consistently points downward. It will never cause an object to move left or right. Here, we've set up our code to match the conditions of freefall. The acceleration has zero x component and a y component of negative 9.8. We have also added a green bar at the bottom of the grid to represent the ground below Safi. Since Safi should stop falling when he reaches the ground, we've changed the while loop to run only while Safi is above the ground. Let's first try the simple case of releasing Safi from rest. Since Safi starts out with zero velocity, his trail dots are close together and his position curve is initially flat. However, since he is accelerating downward, the space between his marker points increases and his position graph begins to become steeper. Scrolling down, we can see that Safi's velocity decreases linearly, becoming more negative under the influence of gravity. Notice also that Safi's x-coordinate doesn't change and the x-component of his velocity remains at zero. In the next episode, we'll add motion in the x direction to create projectile motion. Now let's give Safi an upward initial velocity as if he were jumping. This initial velocity moves him upward, but gravity slows him down, causing his position graph to turn downward. When he reaches his peak, he turns around and begins to fall, giving us a parabola. Safi's velocity graph is again aligned with negative slope, and it looks very similar to the last one. The only difference here is that his velocity begins at a positive value and passes through zero. Notice that the velocity is zero at the very moment that his position graph reaches a maximum. This means that for one instant, Safi is not moving, but his velocity continues to change from positive to zero to negative. Finally, let's give Safi a downward initial velocity. The animation looks similar to the first, but this time he starts out on a downward trajectory. This is shown in how the velocity graph starts out at a negative value and never touches zero. You have now learned how to model free fall motion using vPython. The activities in the description below will help you learn more about this behavior.